use that somehow. But my sister came up with something inspired by her work. At the time, she was working as a librarian for Walt Disney Imagineering. She was actually an artist in the sound production vault. She's the only artist in the sound production vault I've ever met, and I bet you've never met him. <laughs>
especially those who have recommended the books to their friends and uh, quilters and non-quilters alike. I have recommended them as good stories about uh, people and relationships and people handling crises in their lives with moral courage and with the, with the help of friends. So since this is the 20th book, who knew it was going to be 20 books in the series, and it's coming out on October 30th, I thought I would read you a little sneak preview excerpt from this advanced reader's copy. I'm sorry it is not for sale, um, but it will be available from bookstores soon, just in a few matter of weeks. Um, but this is one of my general stories. I also, as you probably noticed, I'm very much interested in, in historical fiction, and I love to write that as well. But this is a contemporary story. And in this book, um, I follow up on an idea I introduced in A Quilter's Holiday. And if you've read that, you might know that somewhere near the end, Elmer Quilter Gresham suggests that they open a special winter session of book camp where anybody can attend free of charge. You can come, you can enjoy quilting with your friends, stay in a beautiful historic manner, and uh, just having lots of fun quilting for a week. And all the quilts that you make, in exchange for that wonderful June weeks getaway, all the quilts that they make would go to charity. And in this case, the charity is an organization that I care a lot about, Project Linus. There, and you've probably heard about them a lot, and you're probably going to make quilts for them. They're an organization, not fictional, they're a real life organization that makes quilts uh, to show love, warmth, and offer comfort to children in need. So, in this particular winter section of hand, all the quilters are gathered for a week of quilting and making projects for Project Lines. And there's a lot of ceremony involved in the quilt week. And uh, so I thought I'd read you something from the beginning when the characters are involved in their, uh, the campers and the all three quilters alike are involved in, or they're about to embark upon their first welcoming ceremony. And at this point, um, they're all gathered on, in this area that Sylvia and the gang have set up. There's a, a beautiful display of quilts in a circle all facing inward. And in the middle of that, there's another circle of chairs all facing inward as well. And Sylvia has lit a candle, and she's holding the candle in the holder, and she's about to begin the ceremony that they call candlelight. In the center of the circle, Sylvia turns slowly, gazing into the faces of her guests. One of our traditions is to conclude the first evening bookend of the ceremony we call candlelight, she told them, as she told hundreds of quilters before. It began as a way for our guests to introduce themselves to us and to one another. Since we're going to be living and working together closely this week, we should feel as if we are among friends. But our ceremony has a secondary purpose. At its best, it helps you to know yourselves better, too. It encourages you to focus on your goals and wishes and how to prepare you for the for the, for the challenges of the future and the unexpected paths you might set forth upon. Sylvia allowed the expectant silence to swell before she explained the ceremony. The cameras would pass the candle around the circle, and as each woman took her turn to hold the glittering light, I know, one eager camera broke in nervously, you want us to explain why we came to Elmery Pokemon and what we hope to gain this week. A few other cameras stared at her, some startled, some annoyed by the interruption. Sylvia smiled emotionally. I see you've visited us before. A ripple of laughter went up from the circle, and the woman nodded vigorously. You're right, that is the question we ask during our summer sessions. But for Thanksgiving, we're more united in purpose than we are at any other time of the year. So that question isn't particularly illuminating, is it? She looked around the circle and found most of the cultures nodding and watching her expectantly. It sheds less light on the workings of our hearts and imagination than, well, than this candle. Sylvia studied the glittering light for a moment, allowing the curiosity to build. We came here to make quotes for Project Minus, to make quotes for children in need, to offer them a sense of love and comfort. We have come here to give. The question I'd like each of you to answer, and to consider carefully before you answer, is why? Why do you give? This time, silence was absolute. Some campers held Sylvia's gaze as she looked around the circle at each of them in turn. Others quickly looked away at the floor, at their hands clasped in their laps. Others turned uncertainly to the left or to the right as if hoping to find the answer in friends' eyes. Sylvia gave them time for contemplation before asking for a volunteer to speak first. For a long moment, the only sound to their own soft breaths. 
loud shifting of chairs, the muffled clearing of throats, the furnace taking in as the night grew colder, the ever present but usually unnoticed creaks and groans of the historic manor settlement. Then, hesitantly, a dark haired woman from Georgia raised her hand. With an encouraging smile, Sylvie so passed through the camp holder and nodded over to begin. Around the circle went the flickering light, and each woman and colleague shared her reasons for giving. Some were variations on what had been spoken before, other answers were wholly new or really incredible. A pair of sisters who had reunited in the foyer during the registration were the last to speak, and when the younger of the pair took the camera, she confessed that she gave because people asked her, asked her to, and that she always felt as if she ought to do more, or at least not need so much prompting to do it. Mona's too hard on herself, said her elder sister Linnea when they asked her drink from the candle. She's just as busy as the rest of us with work and family, and she feels every other available moment for volunteer activities. I can't imagine how she could possibly do more unless she abandoned sleeping altogether. Linnea thought sign up for a moment, thinking, I suppose I give to balance the scales in life. I've been richly blessed throughout my life with a wonderful family, work I enjoy, good health, wonderful children, a loving husband, a roof over my head. I have it all, or at least I have everything that truly matters. I look around the world, and actually I don't have to live much farther than my own neighborhood, and I see so many others who are struggling just to make ends meet from day to day. How could I not share what I have in abundance? Around the circle of culture's mind, their gaze is far away as they sank into private memory, considering perhaps not only the anonymous children who benefit from their quilt steering project, but other people of all ages whom they knew, friends and neighbors and family, who were in need in most difficult times. After a moment, Sylvia took the candle from the name and indicated the quilt surrounding them with color, beauty, and the promise of warmth. All of the quilts you see here were made with giving in mind, she explained, walking around the circle. Some were giving quilts from past quilt givings. Others were made to express love or affection. She paused by a tall block sampler Sarah had made for her husband and in honor of their first anniversary. Others were made in a real loved one to comfort the grieving. Her voice caught in her throat as she passed by the castle wall memorial quilt her late sister Claudia and her sister-in-law Agnes and made for Sylvia from scraps of her first husband's clothing after his tragic death in the Second World War. I hope that these quilts and the stories we've shared tonight will inspire you to give this week and always. And with that, the first day of camp came to an end. Early the next morning, the real work would begin. So that's just a taste of what the Hungry Quilters are up to.